Hey YouTube, welcome to the Off Grid Mountain Homestead. Going to do a review video today on this Saker Mini Electric Chainsaw. Full disclosure before we get into the video, this was provided to me by the manufacturer at zero cost. I did not purchase this product with my own money. Uh, they contacted me a few weeks ago, wanting to send me the product to review. I was debated and torn whether or not to uh, to do the review on this, but I figured why not. Worst case, I get a uh, get a handy little tool to use around the homestead. So I'm going to test it out. I'm going to try to be as unbiased as possible. I'm not going to hold anything back. I'm going to torture test it. We're going to see what she's made of. So anyhow, let me unbox it and show you the components. All right, so I took all the plastic wrapping off so I could do this one-handed. Let's open up and see what we got in here inside the box. All right. Everything's packaged pretty nicely. Battery, the charger, the saw components let me go to a better spot to spread all these components out so we can look at them all right so let's go over all the components we got the battery we got the wall charger we have the bar oil we have a guide bar wrench and we have an adjusting screwdriver an instruction manual and the saw unit so we'll go over the saw unit that's the main main part of the show here four inch guide bar it weighs one kilogram so in freedom units that's 2.2 pounds to anybody that's interested has a operator interface switch right here. So you have to hit the operator interface switch before you pull the trigger. That's the lockout for safety. It's got a hand guard. It's got a chain catcher built in right there. It's got the guide bar protector on the top so you're not doing any, any cutting with the top of the bar for safety. Uh, so this is telescoping right here. And one thing I did notice, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, this is probably gonna be a issue because that's wanting to want to catch on that chain. So on the cutter teeth, so I imagine after a while, the cutter teeth are going to dig into the cover on the top. But anyhow, it's got quarter inch pitch chain. So similar to a steel Pico Micro chain, it's low kickback. It's got the low kickback uh, protectors in front of the cutter teeth. So first thing I was gonna check was the tension out of the box. I recommend three millimeters. Uh, that's pretty close it's not not too tight it freely moves and the manufacturer recommends using oil on the guide bar before first use and if you stop the saw or between each battery change the guide bar needs to be oiled so it doesn't have automatic oil or you have to manually oil the guide bar so it's got a little applicator tip right there so we'll go ahead and throw some some oil on the uh, the chain and guide bar get it lubricated so we don't burn it up first use yeah that freed it up a good bit right there so I'll probably put some more on it before we actually do our cutting and our test here in a minute so oh yeah much better so anyhow put the cap back on that it's got a copper wound motor aluminum frame and they're shrouded with plastic and ventilated of course so I think that's all the features of the saw itself. Oh, I'll go ahead and show you how to adjust the chain tension if you need. You just loosen this nut right there. And if you look down in the saw area right here, you can see this little Phillips head screw. So that's how you adjust your chain tension to get proper tension on it when you're using it. Fully charge the battery before we start the cutting. It took about two hours to charge. I didn't even check it before before I charge, I just went ahead and topped it off from the get-go, but I'm gonna show you the sprocket and stuff under here too before we get started. So, there's just a couple little couple of turns on that, that nut right there and it exposes the stud. It's actually got a metal adjuster for the guy bar or chain tension. And there's your sprocket right there. It appears to be steel, cast steel sprocket. So, you know, not too bad, better than I was expecting. So I'll put it back together now and we'll go use it. Before you use the, the mini saw, if you if you get one of your own, be sure to follow the manufacturer's recommended uh, safety procedures. Just read your manual thoroughly before using the saw for the first time. So what is the saw best used for? Well, it's good for places that your bypass pruners or loppers can't cut, or if you have arthritis problems, stuff like that, problems strengthening your wrist or your arms to cut. You can see, you know, you could, you could probably force your way through that with the, the cutters but probably easier with the saw, so let's find out. All right, this is mountain laurel. So anybody that's cut mountain laurel knows, knows it's pretty tough. This ain't no little pine tree or nothing like that. So let's see how it cuts that. It's roughly two inches across diameter. So 
just gauging off of the uh, the guide bar. So let's see what she's got. Not bad at all. Yeah, it's got plenty of power. Cuts pretty good. Let's look at the chips. Brand new chain, of course, but yes, yeah, rolling out, rolling out good chips. It's not little sawdust. It's pulling big old, big old rolls of chips out. So yeah, chain's pretty good right out of the box. Another good use would be clearing trails, or if you're on your four wheeler or side by side or lawnmower, tractor, or whatever, and you sm find a small little limb that's in your way or whatever, just zip it out of the way. All right, so let's test on a pine tree. Three inch diameter, yellow pine. Good. All right, so I'm gonna re oil after cutting that pine, still on the first charge. It's no showing any signs of slowing down yet but you can see what i was talking about at the beginning of the video about it's going to hit that that guide bar cover yeah it's already starting to scuff it up now i'm going to add some more oil to the guide bar work it in the battery is removed for doing this now don't do it with the battery in the battery is out so get your uh, get your guide bar lubricated back up every so often while you're cutting so there we go now let's cut some more see what she's got one more thing before I cut some more. It is, it is a little bit tight at the beginning. I guess the bearings in the motor, but everything is warmed up or loosened up from being shipped. It moves so much easier now. It's a lot more, way better than it was to start with. So it's a little tight. So if you get one out of the box, it seems a little tight. I was a little concerned with that, but after using it a few times, it's loosening up. So happy so far. All right, we're going to max it out now. Got a four inch red maple. So it's not a full size tree because this is getting to the verge of what I wouldn't cut with this saw because you don't want something hanging or, or going going dead on you while you're cutting in a big tree. But we're gonna simulate a real drop on this tree. And the back cut. And simulating a real tree. There it goes. I didn't leave a lot of holding wood in there, but without a without handlebars and guide plate. Our guides on the side is hard to uh, hard to judge, especially when you're maxing out the. Uh, there I go. Yeah, we were we were further as over four inches. So yeah, don't give me grief about my holding wood. Done the best I could with the mini saw. Now listen to it. Now that I've done a hard cut on it, it's freed up even more. This thing is screaming now. The more I use it, the better it sounds. Surprising. So yeah, I'm starting to like it a little more than I started started to at the beginning. This could be very handy. All right, still on the original, the first charge of the battery. So I told you at the beginning, I'm gonna give it a little torture test. Well, here we have a maple. You can see how much larger it is than the guide bar. So I'm gonna relube the chain. I'm gonna see if it'll go through roughly seven, seven and a half inch uh, maple. So let me lube the chain and then uh, gonna cut into this thing. I don't know if it's gonna go all the way through. I'm not doing a failing cut on it. Um, just the bar's too short, I don't want to have to double cut, but I don't know if the guide protector is going to let me go all the way through, so I have to walk around the tree, but here we go.
spot if you're hanging up. Chain stretched a little bit on that cut and got hot. I can feel the motor getting a little warm too, but I'm going beyond the manufacturer recommendation because I promised you folks I'd torture test it to show a non-biased review. Still on the on the first charge, just old the old the bar. Bam. <laughs> That's impressive. Very impressive. I mean, that tickled me right there, folks. That is, that's something else. I mean, yeah, nice. You can see some of these black spots right there where it was getting getting hot. You know, if it was auto oiling, it would never slowed down. It's just the guide bar started getting hot and pinching down around the chain where it didn't have any lube on the chain. But, I mean, didn't hurt it one whatsoever. I mean, cut through that. It just looked, yeah, way bigger than the, than what it's supposed to cut. Cause like I said, I told you I wouldn't show any bias. I would torture test it and I think that's a pretty good torture test there. Still on the same charge. Change re-lubed after the maple torture test. So now I'm just gonna cut, this is probably a fast forward clip. I'm just gonna start cutting through this sour wood right here. See how many cuts we get till the battery goes dead. Slow down a little bit now. Finally went. I don't know how many cuts that was. That was a bunch. So if you're using this in your yard or clearing trails, that'd be a lot of cuts before the battery went dead. That is quite impressive. Really, that is nice. Hold that thought, it came back to life. I must have tripped the thermals in the battery. I'll give it a minute to cool off so I don't hurt it. But yeah, that's crazy. I've cooled the motor off, let the battery cool off for a minute, relube the chain still on the same charge. So let's keep pushing it. Yep, she's done for now. That battery's that battery's too low. The voltage is dropping out, I guess. Thought it was thermal, but I think just the voltage is shutting off on the on the safety. So it's done. I don't know how many cuts that is, but wow. Alright, so 75,000 cuts on the sirewood tree. I don't know how many that was. That's a bunch. I lost count. I was trying to count. That's just a lot. That's a lot of cut. And you can still see the chains holding up good. Chain's hard as a rock. So I like that. Of course we cut the big huge maple torture test right there. Uh, we cut that, cut the pine tree, limb the pine tree out, cut laurels with it all on one charge, cut some brush up through there. Yeah, lots of cutting. All that beating on it didn't hurt it at all. Still good to go. All right, so the torture test is concluded. I give it two thumbs up. I admit, get going into it, I was a little skeptical if it was going to do one cut or two cuts before the battery started going flat, but... You can see it even, it cuts along that the chain got hot and stretched out. So I have to retension that chain, but that's normal. Anybody that's got a new saw chain, you know when you use it the first time, it stretches. Went through a lot of lube. I would recommend throw all the lube to it that you can. And uh, they recommend vegetable oil or mineral oil. Uh, I don't know what this particular oil is. It held up well. I'm assuming that looks more like mineral oil. But anyhow, yeah, this would be great for, for a gardener, landscape, type stuff around your house, clearing trails for your four-wheeler your side-by-side -side, stuff like that I mean you, you saw me lemon and cutting stuff that wasn't supposed to cut now please don't don't cut nothing bigger than what's recommended like I did on the, the maple up there 
I did it for you so you can see it'll do it. So, you know, please don't do that, even though I did it for the torture test. So, unbiased, I was pushing it past its limits and it held up. Thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with this thing. So, it's going to be a new, uh, new tool addition to the homestead. And special thanks to Saker for sending this off for me, uh, for me to evaluate and to test. And yeah, I approve of it 100%. Now, uh, I'll put an Amazon link to this saw. Uh, Saker doesn't give me anything off of the saw. They gave me the saw for the video. So if you go through my Amazon link, I'll earn a few cents with your purchase, and I'd greatly appreciate uh, you going through my Amazon links. So, uh, yeah, if you don't uh, don't mind, please hit that like button. I think this might be the most torture-tested uh, Saker mini saw on YouTube. And uh, comments or questions, uh, if you want me to see, see something else cut with it, I'll take suggestions in the comments. And if you're not subscribed, I'd greatly appreciate a subscription from you. Thank you for watching the Off-Grid Mountain Homestead. Y'all have a nice day.